Amen. Well, hey, uh, to start this conversation off, to jump into our series on Proverbs, I figured it'd be a good idea to just start with something super, like, just profound, okay? Real deep, kind of heavy. Have you ever heard of the, uh, the movie or book series, book first, um, Twilight? Come on, y'all are talking about, yes, profound. You know what I'm saying? Come on, some of you guys. So we're going to jump in by talking about Twilight. Some of you guys are like, what is that? Uh, so it first came out, I think I was like sixth grade, it's, what, yesterday? Um, so we're, we'll look at this for a second because it ties into what we're talking about. But if you don't know about Twilight, it's a movie series, book series first. And it's all about uh, this girl named Bella and um, her relationship with a vampire. <laughs> And a werewolf. You're like, yeah, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> so if you don't know, it's a weird love triangle. It's basically what these, this whole thing is, right? Some of you guys are like, you're disrespecting Twilight. It's like, no, I'm not trying to, okay? But it's like, it's a weird love triangle between Bella and this vampire named Edward, who she loves, and this werewolf guy named Jacob, who she also loves, okay? And the, the whole thing is kind of different because, like, she does love both of them, and it just, it gets complex. Um, really what it is, is Bella is super indecisive, okay, about who she actually loves. And if you're like me, when you, when you, I've watched the movies, okay, if you're like me, you watch it, and you get kind of frustrated. You're like, just make a choice. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not fair to these. She's like, I love you, but I love him. <laughs> it's like, but I love you more. It's like, well, just make a choice, stick to it, you know, stick to your guns on this one. Let's be here with that. Can I get an amen? Like, she just needs to make a choice. Some of you guys are like, amen. And in the back of your mind, you're like choosing a team. Because y'all remember that, right? Back in the day, come on. Yeah, come on. There was teams. It was like, you're either team Edward or team Jacob, okay? That was where you went. Things got political for team Edward and team Jacob. You know, I'm just like, we're going this way or that way, this way. And there was just this, this weirdness, a lot of indecisiveness. So again, if you're like me, you watch that and you're just like, you got to make a choice. Here's the truth, though. I think a lot of us can actually relate to Bella's indecisiveness. I'm not saying you're in some weird love triangle, okay? But we know that making decisions, making, making choices, one, it's a must, right? Life is full of, of daily decisions and choices that we just have to make. But if we're being super honest, it's not always easy to make those choices, amen? I think we have a, a, a two-part issue, if you will, when it comes to us and our ability to make decisions. The first part, the first issue, is we don't always know what the right choice is to make, okay? Maybe you're not in the same spot as me in that, but I, I'll be real with you. I'm an indecisive person, kind of like Bella, okay? I struggle to know what to do with stuff. Like, when I wake up, I'm like, what are we going to wear today? Okay, some of you guys are like, get out of here, man. It's like, I'm serious, you know? Right now, half of you are thinking, what are we going to do about lunch? What are we going to do? You know what I mean? You're going to get to the car, and you're like, I want this, but I want this, and I don't know what to do. What, what decision do we make? And then what, hap- what happens every time you get to a place, you're like, you know, tuck your significant other. It's like, you, you just choose. And then they, they recommend something, you're like, absolutely not. We're not doing that. Come on. Y'all know it's real. It's like, let's go here. And you're like, no way. You just told me what it is. Yeah, yeah. It causes that, that issue, you know? We don't know. We don't always know what the right choice is to make. You get to the restaurant, you're like, do I want cheese? Everybody likes cheese. No, I don't want cheese, but I do want cheese. You know, it's like we, we have a lot of things. We struggle to make decisions on a daily basis from very small, practical, simple things that kind of don't matter at all and then into really big things. Like what's the future of our family going to look like? Do we, do we buy this home? Do we, do we teach our kids this way? How do we respond to this incident, this situation? We don't often know. So that's our first issue is we don't always know the right answer. Our second issue, and this is probably the one that brings a lot of trouble, is oftentimes we think we know what the right choice is to make, and we're wrong. Have you ever been there before? We think we know, I should do this thing. This is the right choice to make, and we end up being so, so wrong. I've been there. I've been there a lot. It is something that we totally struggle with. Proverbs 14, 12 says, there's a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. Don't make the wrong choice. (laughs) It brings damage, right? Oftentimes, if we think we know, we end up putting so much confidence and just, just going full force into this choice, thinking it's the right one, and then later we step back and look and go, wow, that was so wrong. I was so off on that decision. I should have done it differently. We've been there. So here's the major issue with this, and here's what we're digging into today, is when we do this, uh, and one place that this bleeds into, actually, it's a better way to say it, is into our walk with God. 
this indecisiveness, this struggle to know what the right choice is and the struggle to be confident in the wrong choices oftentimes, that bleeds into our walk with God. Here's what I mean by this. Oftentimes, uh, we have an idea or an expectation of what we think God moving and working in our life should look like. Does that make sense? We say, well, this is how God moves in my life. This is how God works, which is a true thing. It's a real thing. We start to recognize that when we're in relationship with the Lord, that he does move in our lives in certain ways, right? The danger, though, is sometimes we expect God to move in a certain way, and we place that expectation on him, and when it doesn't happen the way we expected it, there's damage. There's problems. There's hurt. There's confusion, right? What we're doing when we do that is we're putting God in a box. Have you ever done that before? We put God in a box and say, here's how you should work, Lord. And God's back here like, I can do all things, right? Like just a, another idea or example. So there's this illustration <clears throat> that people use, communicators use all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, they use it in the church. They use it at like big conferences for businesses, organizations, um, just leadership talks, all this stuff. Um, and usually when they tell this story, this illustration, it's always different. So you've probably heard it before and I'm going to tell it a different way. Um, but it's this picture or this story of this guy. He's out on this boat, long story short, in the middle of the ocean. His boat is just taken over by waves, and he starts to, he's crashed, and he's just floating in the ocean, and he's just waiting. And uh, he's a believer, and so he's like, he prays to God, God, come save me. I know you're going to save me. He has just a firm foundation of faith. He's like, I'm okay. I'm in the middle of the ocean, but God's going to save me. I'm going to wait for God to save me. And he gets real stubborn in this fact of like, I know it. God's going to save me, and that's good, and we should have that faith. Well, all of a sudden, this boat comes by. And they're like, oh, we're here. Like, we just found you. Come get in the boat. And he's like, no, 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 no. God's going to save me. And he sends the boat on its way, right? And then another time, this plane lands, and it's like, oh, we're here. We're, gonna, we're here. We saw you. We saw, like, we're saving you. And he's like, no, 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 no. God's going to save me. Long story short, the dude drowns. <laughs> and he ends up going to heaven, and he's like, God, you were supposed to save me. And God's like, bro, I sent a boat and a plane. What were you doing? You get what I'm getting at? How many times do we go, here's how you should work, God? We get into this, and, and these are good things that we do believe in here at Grace. It's like we believe God can work in miraculous ways. We believe God can work in supernatural ways. We, 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 we believe that, and we want to see that. We want to strive to see that more in our church, in our lives. But God is not boxed up. God can also work in the very practical ways. In fact, I think God's heart for us is oftentimes he wants us to be able to connect and to understand with what he might be trying to do in our lives. He wants us to have peace with that, that he works in ways that are natural, in ways that make sense, right? Ways that don't have to be complicated, that, that don't make us confused about who God is and what his heart is for his people. He can do it all, right? So we don't want to put God in a box. One place that we do this is when it comes to the conversation of wisdom. We think, oh, sometimes we get stuck and go, well, that feels a little too practical for God. It feels a little too simple. It feels like maybe I'm just trying to make something happen. And sometimes that may be true, but other times it's so true that God wants to work through simple wisdom in our lives. He wants to come in and move simply based on the decisions that we have to make on a daily basis. He wants to lead us and love us and guide us and help us in that way. So we can't put God in a box. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this aspect of wisdom and doing that with wisdom uh, and get some background as to how God wants to use wisdom to move in our lives. Okay, so if you don't know a ton about wisdom, you need to know first and foremost that it is important, and it should be so important to every single one of us. In fact, the reason for that is because it is so important to God. And here's, here's how we know this. There's this really cool moment in Scripture, and we're going to take a look at it, uh, in 1 Kings and this is a moment between God and a man named Solomon, okay? So maybe you've heard this before. Maybe you've heard of Solomon. Solomon is the son of King David. Uh, at the end of King David's reign, at the end of his life, um, his son Solomon is appointed to become the king of Israel, to become the king of God's people. Well, once this happens, one of the first steps that Solomon takes is he goes uh, away from his palace, from his kingdom, and he gets alone with God, and he goes to this place to offer sacrifices and offerings to the Lord. And when he gets there to do that, that night he falls asleep, uh, and he has this dream, and God comes to him in a dream and asks him a question. Here is what God says to him. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5. It says, That night the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream, and God said, What do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. Can you imagine that? Like you just go up there and you just spend some time alone with the Lord. 
you go to bed, and in the middle of your dream, God comes in and he goes, hey, what do you want from me? Not in like a, what are you doing here? Like, why are you bothering me? You know, but like, no, literally, what do you want from me? What can I give to you, Solomon? What can I give to you to help you? So Solomon's king, and obviously being a king comes with a lot of things, right? Comes with power, comes with authority, comes with riches, all these things. So naturally, a lot of times in our minds, we're like, oh, a new car would be kind of nice, Lord, you know? This one's kind of shaking a little bit. The AC doesn't work, you know what I'm saying? Come on. It's like, we can think of all these things. Here's what I want, God. So Solomon has this moment where he's thinking through his situation as the new leader of God's people, as the king of Israel. And here's how he responds to God, is he asks for wisdom. It's like, all right, Lord, I'm about to be the leader of your people. I'm about to, to lead them, this whole nation. And I'll be real with you, Lord, I don't really know what I'm doing. He, he refers to himself in comparison to his father as, as the king of Israel. He refers to himself as a baby compared to David. He's like, I'm just an infant. Like, I don't even know what I need to do. But my heart is, I want to take care of your people. I want to lead them well. I want to love them well and help them. And I know that the only way that I can do that, God, is with your help. So I ask for your wisdom, Lord, for your knowledge and understanding. Can it be poured out onto me so that I can do this job, this place, this position of leadership that you've put me in well? So here's what the Lord says back to Solomon's ask of anything, right? You can have anything you want. And here's how God replies to Solomon's answer. So in verse 11, so God replied, because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people with justice and have not asked for a long life or wealth or even the death of your enemies, I will give you what you asked for. I will give you a wise and understanding heart such as no one else has ever had or will have or ever will have, right? So God comes in, he's like, you want wisdom? I'm going to give it to you. In fact, I'm going to pour out so much wisdom on you that your amount of wisdom and how you lead and who you are, nobody else will compare to this. That's what I want to give to you. And on top of that, verse 13, I will also give you what you did not ask for, Solomon. You didn't ask for the riches, for the wealth, for the power, for all these things, the fame. I'm going to give you the riches and the fame. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. This is a huge response from God, amen? Solomon's like, hey, I just want wisdom. I just want knowledge. I want to know how to do this well. And God's like, let's go. You want that? Here it is, and way, way more. An abundance poured out to you as the new king of Israel. Why does God respond that way? Why does God respond in such a big way, in so much blessing, pouring out so much favor on Solomon in this moment? I believe it's because God values wisdom. And God wanted Solomon, and God wants us to value wisdom the same way. God wants us to see that we, as his people, need his help. We need the wisdom, the counsel, the support that he offers to us to live this life that he's called us to live well. Does that make sense today, church? God wants to pour that out on us, but he wants us to want that. He wants us to desire that just like Solomon. God values wisdom. And so what we're going to do today is answer just the, the simple question, right? Why is it so important to him? More in depth, why, why does it matter that much to God, really, that we too would value wisdom just like Solomon did? To answer that question, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at wisdom as a whole. And we're going to look at a few different characteristics, okay, some attributes of wisdom and who re wisdom really is. And recognize I said who, because we're going to jump into some scripture where wisdom is talked about as a person, okay? Uh, so we're going to look at this, and we're going to look through the first nine chapters of Proverbs, every verse. No, I'm just kidding. Imagine that. Midnight, yeah. Lock in. Back to youth group. Come on. <laughs> Never that. Okay, so we're going to look at these first nine chapters, and we're just going to we're going to poke through some different places, okay? We're going to jump around and look at some passages where we're revealed who wisdom is, which again, in turn, will help us understand why God values it and wants us to value it so much. So just some background in these first nine chapters. If you don't know much about the book of Proverbs, what it really is, the whole thing, is, is it's a guide. 
It's instructions on how to live well in God's world. It's God's help, his counsel again to come in and go, here's how you do these things. Here's how this life should live. It is not law, okay? God is not coming. It's not placing law on our lives throughout Proverbs, but support and help. Again, wise counsel to help us do these things, to live our lives very well. These first nine chapters um, are made up of two uh, bigger kind of poetry and speeches. Uh, The first is 10 speeches that are illustrated as a father talking to his son. And he's giving this son counsel and instruction, and he's encouraging him to pursue wisdom every day of his life. The second big chunk of these that you find within the 10 speeches are four poems from someone who is referred to as Lady Wisdom. Maybe you've heard of that. Lady Wisdom. It's speaking of wisdom itself. And they're referring to wisdom, uh, poetically personifying wisdom as a woman. So gentlemen, watch yourselves, okay? The ladies know what's going on. They got it. Literally last night, Rachel was looking over my notes, and she's reading it, and she goes, yep, that's right. You know, I was like, hey, it's true. We don't know where I'd be without this one. It's great. So wisdom is poetically personified as a woman, and what she's doing is she's calling out to people. She's calling out to people and and, and inviting them in, trying to get them to receive wisdom, to see the value in it like Solomon did and like God wants us to. So three different attributes of wisdom. Okay, we're going to look at these three things. We're going to say wisdom is three different things. The first one is wisdom is an invitation. Just like I said, wisdom is an invitation. This comes from Proverbs chapter uh, 1, verses 20 through 23. It says, Wisdom shouts in the streets. She cries out in the public square. She calls to the crowds along the main street, to those gathered in front of the city gate. How long, you simpletons, will you insist on being simple-minded? How long will you mockers relish your mocking? How long will you fools hate knowledge? Come and listen to my counsel. I'll share my heart with you, and make you wise. Wisdom is an invitation. So we have this moment with Lady Wisdom, and she's in the center square. She's in the public of all the people, and she's shouting out to them, inviting them in to receive her counsel, saying, hey, stop making these choices that you're making on your own. Stop being fools and simpletons and thinking that you know how to live this life well. Stop bringing damage and hurt into your world, and instead, listen to my counsel. Receive my wisdom so you can walk in the way that the Lord has called you to. So she's inviting everybody in to wisdom. So here's the first thing that this shows us. Wisdom is a choice, okay? Wisdom is absolutely 100% a choice that we get to make. That's why we have the saying, make the wise choice, right? Come on, second service, we're in here. Let's wake it up, let's go. Make the wise choice, right? I, say, I mean, we, like on Wednesday, students will be leaving and just randomly like, hey, love you, make the wise choice. You know, like, make wise choices. This to, my mom used to say to me all the time, make wise choices. I'm like, yes, ma'am. And then I wouldn't, you know, it's whatever. We don't have to talk about that today, though. <laughs> We're called to make the wise choice, but it is a choice that we have to make. God doesn't come in and force us and go, here's what you're going to do. Here's the right thing. You're going to do it. That's it. It's like, no, no, no. Choose. You can go this way or that. You can choose X, Y, or Z. Like, it is all on you to make that decision. It's an option. It's a decision that you get to make. Now, which one is the one to take? Which path is the way to go? Here's what Proverbs 2, 3 through 5 says. It says, cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you'll understand what it means to fear the Lord. And you will gain knowledge of God. So what we're called to do is, well, first off, wisdom is a choice, and what we're called to do is to make the choice to pursue wisdom. You see that there, right? It says, look for wisdom like it's treasure, hidden treasure, right? We look at wisdom, and it's like sometimes we just think, oh, it's just some knowledge, it's just some thoughts, and no, 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 Lady Wisdom comes in, and she goes, no, 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 no. this is more than that. This is more than you can understand or imagine. This is so valuable, so search for this like you would treasure. Search for this like something that you would just want yourself, the wealth, right? That's how you should strive for this and more because it's even more valuable than those things. So we're called to choose wisdom. It's a choice that we are called to pursue, to chase after. And the really good news is, is everybody can choose it. Everybody can choose wisdom. You can choose to pursue wisdom no matter where you've been. That's a, this is a really, I mean, w- let's talk about the gospel for a second, right? Jesus comes in and he makes salvation available, available to all of us. God's help is in the midst of that. God's help is the same way. 
God wants to come in and he wants to help every single one of us. He does not want to turn away from us. No matter what we've done, it's not his heart. He wants to help. James 1, 5 says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, right? So God's saying, hey, if, if you need my help, come to me. I'm not gonna go, ah, you messed up too many times, you know? You've chosen your own path 11 times. <laughs> no more. I'm not giving it a 12th. You better find wisdom somewhere else. That's not how he works. He's like, no, 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 no. Come to me. If you want my help, the door's open. Come and ask me, and I will not turn you away. I will not rebuke you. Now, hear this. If you continue on in that first chapter of James, it's like, come to me and ask for help. I won't rebuke you, but make sure you come to me and me alone. Don't, don't be wishy-washy on what you're doing, right? Don't be like something that's tossed around by the wind and the waves. No, no, no. Come to me on a foundation of me and me alone, and I'll, I'll help you. And yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a jealous God who wants your heart, but I'm doing this because I want to give you what's best. So choose my way, and I promise I will not turn you away. I just, I think we need to know that today and be reminded of this. In this conversation of wisdom, I know I've been in spots where I didn't feel worthy of being able to go and get the support from my Heavenly Father, whether that was through other people, through situations, through experience, whatever it may be. I didn't feel worthy enough to go or to receive what God was going to give to me, to receive His help, His support, His wisdom. Maybe you're in that spot today. Maybe you know of somebody else who is. God wants us to come to Him. He's like, I'm not going to turn you away. I want, I want to do life with you. I want to love you come to me. This invitation, as wisdom calls out in the streets, it's an invitation to everybody. Do we hear that today, church? So number one, wisdom is an invitation. Number two, wisdom is impactful, okay? Wisdom is impactful. This comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. So let's read this. It says, joyful is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding, for wisdom is more profitable than silver, and her wages are better than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies, Nothing you desire can compare with her. She offers you long life in her right hand and riches and honor in her left. She will guide you down delightful paths. All her ways are satisfying. Wisdom, and check this out, don't miss this. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Happy, happy are those who hold her tightly. Let's take a look at this, okay? So the word wisdom is... Uh, in Proverbs and throughout all the scripture, it's translated, this type of wisdom is translated, it's a Hebrew word, and it's kokma. Everybody say kokma. kokma. You're like, I don't even know what I just said. It's good though, I promise, right? It's a Hebrew translation of the word wisdom, and what it actually translates to is skill and applied knowledge, right? So think back to what we said a few minutes ago. For a lot of us, we think of wisdom as just mental activity. It's just a thought process. It's ideas in our mind of what could or should or might happen, right? Our struggle is we oftentimes let it stay as just activity in our minds. But can I tell you today that the wise choice was not meant to remain in your mind? The wise choice was not just meant to sit in your brain and have nothing done with it, right? The wise choice is a call to action, it's applied knowledge. It's listening to what God says, taking in the knowledge, the understanding that it gives us, and putting it into action in different areas of our lives. Like we said, we have choices to make. We have to make the choices, amen? We have to make decisions, and God is going, apply this knowledge to this choice you're about to make because it will help you to go the direction I've called you to. Wisdom is made to be applied. It is applied knowledge and understanding so that we can move forward in what God has called us to do in our lives. And not only that, here's the really good news. This applied knowledge, when we apply it, it brings benefit, okay? You see back here in verse 13, it says that it is profitable, right? That wisdom brings profit into our lives. So this can get kind of weird because it's like a lot of times we hear people talk and maybe you've heard this in another area of your life, but it's like making the right choice means that things are just gonna get great. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I need to make the wise choice. If I make the wise choice, everything is going to be perfect and awesome and fantastic and wonderful. I do believe, again, that making the wise choice means that we will benefit because the truth is, is we serve a good God, amen? The creator of good things. He is good in all that he is. And so if wisdom comes from a good God, that means wisdom itself is also good. And so if we choose to make the wise choice, the good choice, what we reap will be good. 
we will get what is good for us, best for us from the Lord. Here's what this does not mean, again, that life will be perfect. Because hardships will still come, right? Struggle will still come. Issues will still arise. Life will still be life. But what it does mean is that we don't have to face it alone. What it does mean is that now we can get the counsel of our Heavenly Father who says, here's how you navigate these issues well. Here's how you navigate these stormy waters well. Here's the right choice in the midst of your circumstance, in the midst of your situation. Here's the direction that you need to go. It may not be easy, but it can still be good. Proverbs 4, 6 through 9 says, Don't turn your back on wisdom, for she will protect you. Love her, and she will guard you. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. If you prize wisdom, she will make you great. Embrace her, and she will honor you. She will place a lovely wreath on your head. She will present you with a beautiful crown. It's God's heart to bring good things into our lives. God wants health. God wants growth. What God wants for us above all things and what it means to to bring benefit into our lives from wisdom is to be in right standing with him. Because when we're in right standing with God, we're exactly where we need to be. That is the best thing. That is good. Does that make sense, church? That's what we're called to do. That's what wisdom wants to do. Wisdom wants to impact our life. It wants to bring health and change and goodness and wants to get us into a place where we are in right standing, healthy relationship with Jesus Christ. Because we need that. It's the only way that we can move forward in life. It's the only way that we can grow and and, and lead and move in the calling that God has placed on our lives because he has placed calling. But we need the wisdom of the Lord. We need to be impacted by it. Look at it this way, okay? In the conversation of, wisdom brings impact. We know that wisdom can bring benefit, but if we're being really honest, the lack of wisdom can bring harm. Amen? It can bring some damage, some trouble. You guys see this real nasty, vicious cut on my hand? Yeah, I live a wild life. Okay, if you couldn't tell, it's pretty crazy. For online, I don't know if you can see that, but it's there, all right? Um, (laughs) They need like a magnifying glass. So what this is from, okay, you can't laugh at me. (laughs) Uh, A few weeks ago, uh, it's already started. We were out at Rachel's grandparents' land. They live out on the far east side of town, and we had like set up this little thing with some like string lights, and the lights were attached to a pole with some zip ties. Well, we were taking everything down, and we were cutting off zip ties. Okay, see where this is going? And uh, I'll say this. I'm not the kind of guy who carries around like a pocket knife, okay? Um, I couldn't tell you why. Maybe just because I don't like things in my pockets. You know, I'm not even like having my phone in my pocket. It's just a lot. Uh, so I'm not that guy. Well, somehow, I couldn't even tell you how I acquired it. I have a knife. <laughs> it's not like a kitchen knife. It's like, you know, it's like a Gerber knife. And uh, I think I wanted it like a Christmas party, okay? I have no idea. But I had this knife in my truck. We're cutting these zip ties off. I'm like, oh, this will be great. Like, it'll just be an easy, quick cut. It's a super sharp knife. It's like brand new, never used. So I bring it out. I'm cutting off these zip ties, okay? And just the knife's sharp enough so I can just lift, and it pops it off. We're going, we're going great. Get through a bunch of them. Come to like one of the last ones, y'all, okay? And this bad boy was like, I ain't coming off. You know what I mean? It's like, you got to be kidding me. So I'm like trying to, it's just not working, probably because I need to go to the gym, but it just wasn't happening, right? So I'm like, ah, it's just not sitting still, it's not working. I grabbed the pole, and I got the knife in this hand. And we know, ladies and gentlemen, we have the wisdom to know that when you're cutting something, you always cut. (laughs) Come on, church, teach me something good. (laughs) We cut away from ourselves, right? And our hands, (laughs) So I'm here, and I'm like, oh, I got to get it. And I'll, t- I'll be honest with you, okay? I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to give myself, cut myself some slack. We were in a rush. <laughs> it's like, we knew we had to get out of there. We are trying to get all the stuff taken care of. It was hot, humid, all the things. I was like, all right, let's just get out of here. So what I did is I made the choice to choose time <laughs> over wisdom and safety. And I went to cut this thing. Wouldn't work. So I gave it some oomph, and the knife went right into my hand. It was wonderful. You know what I mean? I was so frustrated. I was like, you got to be kidding me. The first thing that hit my mind was, cut away from yourself, Ricky. You know, I'm like, oh. Even Rachel was like, it's okay. Because I was like, I'm so dumb. You know what I mean? It's like beating myself. Like, how did I do that? It's just cut it. My kids are over there like, what happened? You know, they see like blood pouring out my hand. They're like, let us see. It's like, ew, you guys are weird. Get out of here. It's just, yeah. So anyways, I learned my lesson, right? And what I chose to do, what I chose was time, the, the, the option to save time over the right and wise way 
to handle that situation, okay? Silly example, but can we be real that we have those situations? Does anybody else have a situation like that? We do all the time. On a daily basis, we are called to make the wise choice. And wisdom, the choice to be wise, the choice to make the wise choice or not brings impact everywhere. There's consequences, right? There's benefit. There's consequences. And again, if we choose not to make the wise choice, there's impact as well. And things can bring hurt and pain and damage, but that's not God's heart for us. He wants to bring goodness and benefit. Even though it won't be perfect, God wants to use wisdom to impact and change our lives. That's point number two. Third point, last point, is wisdom is immersed. This one's fun, y'all. I liked, I liked reading about this and studying this uh, idea right here. Wisdom is immersed, okay? Um, so Proverbs 8, 22 through 23, and then we're going to skip. You'll see it. There's going to be the, the dots at the end to verse 29 in that same chapter. It says, The Lord formed me from the beginning before he created anything else. This is Lady Wisdom again in one of her four poems talking about herself, talking about wisdom itself, and it's, it's it being formed or around uh, when God created all things before he did. So the Lord formed me from the beginning before he created anything else. I was appointed in ages past at the very first, before the earth began, before all of creation, wisdom was there. I was there, verse 29, when he set the limits of the seas so they would not spread beyond their boundaries. And when he marked off the earth's foundations, I was the architect at his side. I was this constant delight, rejoicing always in his presence. So here's what this reveals to us, a few things, okay? Kind of takes us back to that conversation of us putting God in a box. You remember that? Where we like to think, oh, here's how you should work in my life, God. Here's the expectations I'm placing on you. And we're, we're, we're limiting God in our lives and in our minds. But what we see here is wisdom is actually immersed in all things. God uses wisdom in all things. So we got to get out of that mindset. If you can't use it in my life, it's like, no, God has used it from the beginning, from the very, very beginning. There's a part earlier in Proverbs, I believe, three, where it says God used wisdom in creation. Like it says, he was, wisdom was the architect at God's side. Wisdom has been used since the very, very beginning. It's immersed in all things. Another way to say it is wisdom is woven into the fabric of the universe. A lot of the times we, as, as, as people of faith, as, as, as Christians or just in the church, we look at our faith and what we choose to follow as going against the grain of the world, right? It feels like the majority of the world isn't pursuing Jesus. And so we, we, we look at it that way and say, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're few in the midst of a whole globe of people who are pursuing Jesus. And there's, that's valid. It's, it's real. But the flip side of that, what we think is, God created this world, right? Like we just read. He's the creator of all things. And he created it with wisdom. And so when we choose wisdom, when we choose God's way, what we're actually doing is going with the grain of the world as it was intended. Does that make sense? We're going with it as it was supposed to be. God's way. Does that make sense today, church? That, that's, that's what we're called to do. Choose wisdom, and we, we go with the grain of the actual universe, the way that God had formed it to be from the very beginning with wisdom itself. I just think it's so important for us to see this, that wisdom is immersed in all of it. Wisdom is in all things. God uses wisdom to bring about life, right? It's a tree of life like we read. It is so important, and we need it to be in right standing with the Lord, to go in the direction he's called us. We have to recognize that he brought it about from the very, very beginning, before it all. There's a, a verse, or sorry, a, um, a quote from an author named David J. Atkinson, and this is what it says. It says, in the book of Ruth, it is at the gate that Boaz transacts his business. In the book of Amos, the leaders are admonished because they have failed to enact justice at the gate. It is here at the city gate that wisdom issues her call. Wisdom belongs at the center of public life. What he's referencing here in, is, is a few other stories, moments in the Old Testament, and then back to wisdom. And what they all have in common is the leaders, uh, Boaz, right, leaders uh, in Amos, what they do when they're ready to make a decision for their community, for the city, when they're ready to, to come up with plans or, or just to move forward with what they feel God has called them to do for their community, they meet at the center of the town, at the city gate, right? They meet at, at the, the center of it all and say, this is where decisions are made. This is where we come together and bring wisdom. And then we look at Proverbs 1, like we read earlier, and it says that wisdom shouts in the streets. She cries out in the public square, right? She calls to the crowds along the main street to those gathered in front of the city gate. 
to the center of it all. Wisdom belongs in the center of all things. Wisdom belongs in the center of our hearts and our lives and the decisions that we make. We need wisdom. Wisdom is called, right? It is already. We see that in God's handiwork. It is immersed. It is in the fabric of the universe. And God's now saying, let it be immersed in your life. Let it be encompassed in all that you are and all that you do. Let my counsel, my help surround you. We need it. So let it exist in the way it was created to be. Wisdom is foundational. Wisdom is called to be in our daily lives, in all things, in every decision we make. So to, to close this, let's go back to the original question, right? We look back at Solomon and his moment with God and, and God's response to Solomon. Why, again? Why is it, after we've learned a little bit about wisdom and who wisdom is, why is it that God values wisdom so much? Two reasons. Two very simple reasons for us to hold on to as we move throughout the rest of this series, okay? Number one, and most importantly, is wisdom leads us back to God. God wants us to value wisdom, to want it, because it takes us to him. Proverbs uh, 9.10 says, Fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom, right? Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. We read that verse, and we've talked about this before at Grace um, uh, on Sundays, but this, this idea of fearing the Lord, it's, it's not a fear to be truly afraid of God, but instead to be in awe and of reverence of God and who He is, to look at Him as sovereign and say, God, you are, you are over all, in awe of you, God. You are awesome. You are amazing, and, and I believe that you are who you say you are. That's what it looks like. That's the foundation that, that Proverbs is talking about when it comes to wisdom. It's going, hey, God, you're the answer. You're it. If I want to live a wise life, if I want to do things well, I've got to come to you. You are it. You're the only way it works. Because if I don't, what I'm doing is I'm going on my own way. I'm doing it my way. And I'm stuck in that place of, I honestly don't know what the right choice is. I'm indecisive. And even if I think I know, there's a chance I'm going to be very wrong. And if I take that risk, it can lead me to places that you never called me to, God. So instead of just wasting time going that way, I'm coming to you. And I want what you have for me. I want your way. Give me wisdom, God. Give me understanding so that I can live this life well, just like you showed Solomon, just like he chose. God, give me the strength to choose that. Lead me back to you. Wisdom leads us back to God. And the second thing is wisdom gives us what we need. And that goes hand in hand, right? We go back to God and then we get what we need from him because that's what he offers. He offers what he knows we need. God cares about the desires of our hearts. God knows what we want. But if it's not good for us, he's going to go, hey, you may want this. Here's that. Because this is what's going to help you. This is what's going to bring health. This is what's going to keep you in right standing with me. Here's what you need. Proverbs 3, 5 through 8 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. We've heard this, right? We know this. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. He'll give us what we need. He'll light the way and say, that's where you go. This is your answer to your question of, God, do I do this? Do I do that? Let me give you peace. Let me talk to you in a way that I can, in so many other ways that I can. Let me, let me reveal to you my will for your life because I want you to go this way. I want not just what's good for you. I want what's best for you. I want to give you what you need. That's why God was pleased with Solomon because Solomon went to God. He said, God, I want what you have. That's what he wants. He wants to be close in relationship, and he just wants to love us and lead us into the good things, into the benefits that he has. And God's hope is that we too, just like Solomon, would get to that place and say, I want wisdom, Lord. I choose your way over my own. Can we pray, church? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you that we get to be here, that we get to worship your name. God, you are, you are worthy of every part, every aspect of praise. God, you, you're worthy of every breath in our lungs. Lord, help us to choose wisdom, Lord. So many different things pulling us in different directions, trying to get us to choose the wrong thing. So we need your help, God. We need your counsel to come in and to show us, to teach us, to lead us to what is right, God. We need you. So whatever's holding us back, Lord, I pray that you, you break down walls, you break down barriers, Lord, that you let us get back to you, Lord. Help us to seek you, God. Give us the desire, the, the fire, Lord to seek you and to seek your way, God. More than anything else, like hidden treasure, Lord, help us to want you. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody said, 
Amen. Well, church, you